Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, we'll be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bid we shan't be ashamed to turn, turn will be your delight till by turning, turning we come round right. Good morning and welcome to St. Mary Parish. As we celebrate in this week after the Epiphany, we recognize today with our saint, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, how she, her life, which was pretty well set, had to turn, turn, turn. She had to learn to do the will of the Lord. And so that is an example for each and every one of us. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who crowned with the gift of true faith St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's burning zeal to find you, grant by her intercession and example that we may always seek you with diligent love and find you in daily service with sincere faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm will be, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Every nation on earth will adore you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be with you and with your spirit. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When Jesus saw the vast crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. Dismiss them so they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. He said to them in reply, Give them some food to yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy two hundred days' wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fishes. And so he gave orders to have them set down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places and rose by hundreds and by fifties. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up twelve wicker baskets full of fragments and what was left of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in the intentions for this Mass. For vocations to consecrated religious life. So we keep in prayer vocations, because and it's very timely that today we celebrate Saint Elizabeth Ann Bailey Seaton. She was the founder of the first religious order here in the United States, so the first Catholic orphan orphanage. The Sisters of Charity set an example, a path on how schools and orphanages would be set up throughout the United States. And so we hear on this Tuesday after Epiphany, we, we are being called to recognize what our faith is all about. It's about love. It's about God who is love. If we say we love, then we have to know the Lord. If we say we love the Lord and we do not truly love our neighbor, ourself, or our God, then, then we are liars. And so we find ourselves on a journey. A journey is the song that we sang when we came in about turning, 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 always turning to the will of God. That is the, the life that we are called to have, and that's the life that St. Elizabeth Ann Seton had. She was born into wealth and privilege in New York just a few years before the American Revolution. Her path was already set, what was, would be expected of her as a, a wealthy young woman from a good family with many great prospects. And so when she married a wealthy businessman, everyone thought her life was perfect. But within a few years, within 11 years, her husband died. His business had failed. She was a widow of five, a widow and also a mother of five children, and she was penniless. But it was her time when she spent in Italy, in the last few years of her husband's life, when they went for treatment and for better climate for his health, that she became acquainted with the fat Catholic faith, because she grew, grew up a very staunch Episcopalian family. And so seeing the kindness, seeing how they lived out their life daily, how they turn and turn always to trying to do the Lord's will, to recognize the simple gifts in our lives, that they came from God and that we were called to give them away to others so they become something even greater. She converted after her husband had passed and she was disowned by much of her family. So she started on the path that God was calling her to, to do setting up a school, setting up an orphanage, teaching sisters 
that is always about the will of God. That's all we should ever put in our minds. That should be the path we are on, always asking that question daily. Lord, what is it you will of me to do today? And whatever tasks you give me, keep me on that path to always do your will and not my own. And so we are called to recognize in St. Elizabeth Ann Seton that good example of recognizing God gave her many twists and turns in her life. She was always open to listening to the Lord. She actually converted because of three different things that drew her to the Catholic Church, which was different from her Episcopalian upbringing. The real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and also recognizing how the Church leads back to the Apostles and Jesus Christ himself. And so seeing that teaching authority. And so that's where we are called to recognize too, in our own faith. If we don't already, let us pick up Scripture. Let us read also the documents of the Church in all the different areas that, uh, that we are being inclined to read. To find out truly what the Church says. We mostly hear from other people what they say the Church believes. But my question to you today, um, as we have this memorial of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, is what do you truly know of the teachings of the Catholic Church? This is the time, a new year, to pick up and find out what does the Church really teach on these issues so we can know that we what the will of God is in all these different aspects and we won't take somebody else's word. So let us be like Elizabeth Ann Seton. Let us be open to all the ways the Lord is, is trying to move us in different ways, even when it doesn't seem to make sense in the way that the world says our life should be. By living out the life that God wills for us, we will be truly happy, both on this earth and in heaven to come. With the arrival of the Magi, who came to see the truth, let us Give thanks to our Lord, who is now born, who humbled himself. And let us lift our hearts in prayer for who teaches us that love has no bounds. For the church, that we may know this day how close God is to us, how blessed we are, and that God is always with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all fear, that we listen to the angel's message, fear not, that we may be freed, and that all the human family may be freed from the bonds of fear, and to go out each day living boldly, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for us gathered here today, that on this day that we may see the presence of Jesus in each and every one of us, in all whom we meet, in all whom we have yet to meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that the continuation of the Christmas story will renew their hope. And we especially pray for all those names and intentions that have been placed in the book of the sick. And we remember Samuel Jacobson, Julia and Deacon Ramon Navarro, Alvin Michalowski, Jane McRae, Carmen Goodwin, Tilly Puckett, Jim Walensky, and Joanna Norcross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may they rejoice as they stand in the glory of God, especially all our relatives and our friends and our fellow parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray the prayer that is in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, all the ends of earth have seen the saving power. Hear our prayers during this season of Christmas as we joyfully proclaim the glory of your infant Son on earth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we ask that you look graciously upon our gifts placed on your altar in celebration of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and grant by the power at work in this sacrifice that we may be more deeply inserted into the mystery of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As we partake of the sacraments of our salvation, while recalling the memory of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that we may be inflamed with a burning desire for the heavenly table, and by its power consecrate our life faithfully to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As Elizabeth Ann Seton always prayed to do the will of the Lord, let us also make that our prayer as we pray the prayer for Renew My Church. Lord Jesus, you speak to us today as you spoke to holy men and women who have gone before us. In every age and in our own time, you call to us and say, Renew my church, pour out the gift of your Holy Spirit upon us, and so enable us to hear you clearly, to listen to each other attentively, to imagine our future boldly, to discern your direction wisely, to persevere in your holy will courageously, to stay together in charity, to surrender our own plans readily, to embrace the greater good, to hand on your gifts to future generations. May we remain in the holy company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles and all the Saints. May their example and presence inspire us with patient confidence in the work of your grace. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And as you continue, as we continue to go walk through this Christmas season, let us always be joyful and let us always show the light of Christ coming out of us to everyone that we meet. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to calm down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, t'will be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend we shan't be ashamed to turn, turn, will be our delight till by turn.